To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. So, my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed how does the lightning is going to occur. Now, within this chapter, my dear children, we will be discussing about the main types of lightning. Now, let's head on to see the main types of lightning then. So, types of lightning, depending on the sides between which the chargers jump, lightnings are classified into three types. So, now you know that lightning is a discharge of static electrical charges from a certain cloud. Now, according to the position where the chargers are going to discharge, lightning can be divided into three main categories. Okay, lightning can be divided into three main categories according to the position where the chargers is going to discharge. So, first of all, lightning can discharge from a certain cloud to another cloud, my dear children. Okay, from one certain cloud to another cloud, lightning can be discharged. So, this is called as cloud to cloud lightning. Okay, cloud to cloud lightning. So, we can write the first one. Cloud to cloud lightning from one certain cloud to another certain cloud lightning discharge can occur. This is called as the cloud to cloud lightning my dear children cloud to cloud lightning. Then number two second one in second one right or in the second instance of lightning lightning can occur right from the cloud to the atmosphere. Lightning can release from cloud to an to the atmosphere. Directly to the atmosphere, the lightning will discharge. So that is referred as cloud to air lightning. Okay, cloud to air. Air means to our atmosphere, the charges will get released. So this is referred as cloud to air lightning. So number two. Cloud to air lightning. Cloud to air lightning. The second one. Then the third one, my dear children. Lightning can occur from a certain cloud to the ground. Okay. From a certain cloud towards the ground can also occur. This is called as cloud to ground lightning cloud to ground lightning right so third one cloud to ground lightning So, number one, cloud to cloud lightning, second one, cloud to air lightning, number three, cloud to ground lightning. So, these are the three main types of lightnings that we can observe within our environment. So, out of these three, my dear children, which one is most, most dangerous for us? I mean, like for the humans and for the animals and for other properties, what is the dangerous one? That would be, my dear children, the third and the final one, the cloud to ground lightning because on the ground you know that these things are available i mean all the humans animals plants and other properties are available on the ground no so cloud to ground lightning is the most dangerous thing or most dangerous incident out of the three incidents or out of the three types of lightning my dear children, it's because that serve destruction of properties and lives will occur 
from ground lightning my dear children okay from cloud cloud to ground lightning these two are not that much i mean like uh, those things are these two cloud to cloud lightning and cloud to air lightning not are not that much dangerous for us okay cloud to ground lightning is the much dangerous thing right that can uh, lead to serve disastrous conditions for us okay so these are the three main types of lightning in here my dear children like i said the static electrical charges are going to discharge from a cloud towards the ground or to a cloud or to atmosphere according to that there are three types if from a cloud to another cloud this discharge is going to happen then it is referred as cloud to cloud lightning if from a cloud to air if this discharge is going to happen then it is referred as cloud to air lightning if cloud to another if cloud to ground if this discharge is going to happen then it is referred as cloud to ground lightning okay so these are the three main methods of lightnings right okay then so as you can see here photographs illustrating the above three types of clouds are given below so these are the photographs of those three lightning processors number one given cloud to cloud lightning so cloud to cloud lightning as you can see here it's happening above it's very rare to identify my dear children because from one certain cloud to another certain cloud lightning bolt is going to travel right somewhat difficult to identify this thing because it's going to happen up above in the air next one second one given cloud to air lightning this thing can be i mean like up to a certain level we can observe this thing because to the atmosphere the discharges are getting discharged now so like when we are looking at the sky directly we can observe uh, the lightning process right the lights which are going to uh, travel here and there when the electrical charges are getting discharged to the atmosphere so this is cloud to air lightning number three this is my dear children the most dangerous one this is the most dangerous one and it is clearly visible to us without any trouble this is the cloud to ground lightning process over there the lightning strikes kelim uh, the lightning strikes directly to the right the lightning strike directly to the ground like this so we can clearly observe the lightning strike or the lightning bolt right and uh, it is going to give out huge amount of energy so as it carries huge amount of energy a very big flash can be observed and after that my dear children you know that the thunder is also going to occur so in all of these instances thunder is going to happen but however in here the impact given out by the thunder is very high right and also the lightning strike is also going to be very deadly and it will destroy all the properties and lives along its path so these are the three main types of lightning that we can observe right okay then so a jump of charges either between two regions of charged cloud or between two clouds with different charges is referred to as a cloud to cloud lightning so like i said my dear children cloud to cloud lightning means now here the charges are going to discharge from one certain cloud to another certain cloud okay Stati static electrical charges are going to discharge from one certain cloud to another certain cloud this is referred to as the cloud to cloud lightning okay number 2 sometimes a discharge of charges accumulated in a cloud occurs to surrounding air it is a cloud to air lightning so sometimes my dear children this lightning or this discharge of ele electrostatic charges will happen from a cloud to the air this is called as the cloud to air lightning okay cloud to air lightning then the most dangerous type is the cloud to ground lightning let us find out how it occurs now cloud to lightning like i uh, cloud to ground lightning like i said is the most dangerous of them all okay 
Here the lightning strike is coming towards the ground from a cloud. Now let's find out how this is going to occur then. So when a charged cloud positions itself above a certain point on the earth, positive charges are induced on the ground due to the influence of negative charged accumulate in the lower part of the cloud. So can you remember in the occurrence of lightning process when we are discussing how the lightning is going to occur we discuss that usually top part of the cumulonimbus cloud is charged positively and the bottom part is charged negatively so therefore my dear children the bottom part has negative static electrical charges now okay which means my dear children at a certain point as there are a large amount of negative electrical charges now at a certain point i mean like the uh, on the area where the cloud is going to spread near the ground level of that cloud right what will happen but positive charges are getting collected because the negative charges are available at the cloud like this so let's imagine that this is the ground level okay and my dear children, this is that, I will use this kind of color, right. So this is the cloud then. So in the cloud, there are negative charges like this. And now what will happen within this region, my dear children, right, within this region, within the region, within the ground region, positive charges will accumulate within the ground level near to the cloud. On the ground uh, it's because of the influence of the negative charges which is over here which is placed on the cloud uh, okay now let's see when the amounts of charges in the cloud on earth increase at a certain moment negative charges from the cloud jump to earth this is called a cloud to ground lightning now when the amounts of charges in the cloud and on earth increase now when increasing positive charges over here and increasing negative charges over here i mean like you know that all the negative charges are now coming getting come and getting attracted towards down uh, towards the uh, ground my dear children as Positive charges are getting accumulated on the ground level. So, all the negative charges which are located at the top layer, I mean like this is just one single layer, you know? so then above that there should be another layer. You know? So, from that two layers, all the charges, all the positive, all the negative charges, all the possible negative charges are now coming downward and those things are getting attracted with the positive charges at the ground level. So, at a certain instance, what will happen? the charges which are accumulated negative charges which accumulated right negative charges which accumulated will definitely come down like this okay because of the potential difference which is getting created on the cloud and the ground level so all the negative charges all the negative charges now will come towards the ground as what as lightning my dear children right so this is called as cloud to ground lightning so this is the cloud and this is the ground level So this is how the cloud to ground lightning will occur, right? So cumulonimbus clouds uh, are going to generate negative charges, negative static electric charges near the ground level. Then what will happen, my dear children? At a certain instance, if, right? At a certain if instance, if the charges are enough, then what will happen? these charges will come towards the ground level 
right as a lightning strike like this so this is how cloud to light ground lightning will occur okay right so there are three types of lightning cloud to cloud lightning here the lightning discharge from one certain cloud to another static electrical charges are going to discharge from one certain cloud to another then second one cloud to air lightning now in that case my dear children from a certain cloud static electrical charges are getting discharged to the atmosphere or to air in the third instance cloud to ground lightning static electrical charges getting discharged to the ground from a cumulonimbus cloud like this okay so cloud to cloud cloud to air cloud to ground okay right then so the three types of lightning so out of these three types of lightning my dear children the most dangerous one is the final one which is over here cloud to ground lightning from cloud to ground lightning serve disastrous conditions may occur to properties and also for the lives of people and animals as well okay right then so as you can see here this is how the cloud to ground lightning occurs negative charges which has got accumulated on the cloud you can see it very clearly then because of the influence of those negative charges positive charges can be observed near the ground level so what will happen at an instance these negative charges will travel towards the ground as a lightning strike okay so induction of positive charges on the ground due to negative charges in the cloud is given in the figure right this is the cloud to ground lightning this is how cloud like cloud to ground lightning occurs because of the opposite charges positive and negative right like this okay so my dear children next topic right the next topic is given next main topic we are about to discuss right now is lightning and thunder okay lightning and thunder so the voltage of a cloud to light uh, voltage of a cloud to ground lightning is about 10 million volts see it's about 10 million volts cloud to ground lightning now in here the voltage is going to be 10 million that means my dear children very large amount of a potential difference this potential difference is immense that's why large amount of static electrical charges are going to discharge towards the earth okay so 10 million volts usually when you take the high tension power lines those are like around 60,000 volts here we are talking about 10 million volts okay 10 million volts so it's a huge value so because of that my dear children because of this huge potential difference chargers has the ability to travel even through air even though it is an insulator so in such lightning a current of nearly 25,000 amperes flows then the next one 25,000 amperes is the current which is going to flow usually in a plug pane at our houses the maximum possible right the maximum possible electric current which can be obtained is 13 amperes usually now it has uh, now it's a standard right it's a it's a standard usually it's a standard now okay in our houses when new houses are being built right we have to use 13 ampere plug pins right that means the maximum amount maximum amount of current that can be obtained from a plug pin in our normal houses modern houses is like 13 amperes my dear children so 13 amperes is the maximum current that we can take from household electricity here now we are talking about 25,000 amperes you know that even our household electricity is very deadly then imagine how much is lightning strike because it carries 25,000 amperes 
very large amount then next one given the voltage of an led lamp used in houses is 230 volts while the current flowing through it is less than even 0.1 amperes led lamp used in our house so it has the voltage of 230 volts you know that our household electricity has the potential difference of 230 volts so 230 volts is the potential difference in our house my dear children or at our houses there's a potential difference of 230 volts okay and my dear children if we are going to operate a certain led bulb you know that our houses are usually being lighted up with led no so within this led if you are going to plug it into a, our normal household electricity then within this led there is a potential difference of 230 volts and the current which is going to flow is like around 0.1 amperes very less amount of current is going to flow through it okay this is for just comparison my dear children now imagine how much of our current is going to flow uh, through our body if we are getting strike with lightning right 25,000 amperes my god a huge amount right so it's going to be very deadly that's why these lightning strikes are much more right much more dangerous remember especially cloud to ground lightning other two are not that much harmful for us right then hence you will be able to understand how high is the voltage and the current of lightning so by just looking at that point you can clearly observe how much dangerous is this lightning right when such a large current flows through air in a very short time about 10 milliseconds air is heated up to a very high temperature this temperature is about 30000 degrees of celsius it is five times the temperature of the sun's surface so my dear children the, the children the other issue huge amount of energy blast is now coming towards the earth it carries very high amount of voltage and extremely large amount of electric current so when this thing coming towards our earth okay when this thing coming towards our earth my dear children as it carries huge amount of energy what will happen air around the lightning bolt or air around that area will get heated up or it, the temperature of the air particles will get increased because of the energy carry which is getting uh, carried out by the lightning bolt my dear children so the energy will be very high within this so the temperature around the air particles will also going to increase dramatically when increase in temperature my dear children right actually now when you take the temperature it's not going to increase like by uh, you know 20 or 30 degrees actually uh, because of the huge amount of energy possessed by this lightning bolt the air particles near the lightning bolt will get like 30,000 30, 30, degrees of Celsius. So it's like five times the sun uh, temperature of the sun's surface. Sun's surface temperature is nearly 6,000 degrees of Celsius. No, so six times six times six thousand into five times 30,000. Right, it's like you are being at a place where you are surrounded by six suns okay six suns not just one but six okay and the other thing is that imagine now you are on the surface of the sun not like in here but on the surface then multiply that temperature by six imagine how much is the temperature so air particles are getting heated like and a flash right in a flash up to a very great greater temperature like up to 30000 degrees of celsius air particles near the lightning strike is going to be heated okay so this is a very extreme temperature right due to 
due to of the high air temperature around the lightning current expands instantaneously same thing happens when a cracker explodes when air expand at once like this first a wave is generated followed by a sound wave the result of the sound wave is the thunder now instantaneously what will happen my dear children because of the immense temperature air particles will start to expand because of the high temperature because of the immense temperature air particles will expand right so same thing happens when a cracker explodes uh, now when a cracker is going to explode the same thing is going to happen that's why it is going to emit that large sound air particles near the right cracker will get heated and my dear children it will expand quite quickly like in milliseconds okay like in milliseconds it will expand up to a greater extent so that will create a wave so when that wave is going to travel along the air medium a sound is getting generated so the sound is the one which is referred as the thunder okay this is called as the thunder right so sound is a type of a wave we discussed that thing in the previous year my dear children under the sound okay so it's traveling as like a wave my dear children right then in lightning both light and sound are born simultaneously but light is seen first and sound is heard afterwards the reason for this is that the speed of light is very high whereas the speed of sound is much less than the speed of light and now the other thing is that my dear children see lightning and sound are born simultaneously that means at the same time it's going both the things are going to occur but however we observe the lightning first i mean lightning means the light given out by the lightning process could be observed first but however now i think you already have this experience when a lightning is going to happen now let's imagine that we are at outside now a lightning strike is going to come as soon as the light as soon as you are going to see the lightning you're just going to close your ears like this why is that because you know what is going to come afterwards the thundering right so as you as soon as you are going to see the light you are going to close your ears because it's going to be a very heavy noise and it's going to be uh, a disturbance for our ears it's quite difficult to hear that sound so definitely you have come across with this kind of a an experience okay so when the lightning is going to come you are going to close your ears that means my dear children just by looking at the light right there is enough time even to close our ears like this right that means my dear children you are getting the sense or you are getting the visuals of the lightning then your brain has the ability to process that data and to command your arms to close down your ears so a certain time period is going to pass when doing that process no right St uh, still right still the sound is not going to come after your ears are been closed after some time uh, the sound is going to come what is the reason for this i mean like there is a certain gap there is a considerable gap between the light which is going to emit from the lightning and between the sound which is going to emit be because of the lightning now these two are generated simultaneously but however there is a certain gap what is the reason for it reason is my dear children light is way more faster than sound okay light is way more faster than sound this is the reason so here it is given since the speed of light is very high light travel from the place where lightning occurs to us is negligibly small 
sound sound takes more time to reach us that is why sound reaches us later so my dear children like i said okay in here what will happen sound has less speed of traveling i mean like speed of sound through air is very less however when you take the light speed of light actually speed of light is the fastest thing or the fastest speed within our universe okay it is the fastest possible thing that can be observed in our universe no person no spaceship has the ability to break that barrier it's a universal barrier my dear children albert einstein a great scientist states that within the theory of relativity he states that this light speed of light is a universal constant we won't be able to break that barrier okay so it's the maximum possible speed that a particle can achieve within this universe my dear children the maximum possible velocity or the speed speed of light okay actually particle a particle will not be able to achieve such kind of an speed if so it's getting converted into a wave like a light wave or else a different kind of a wave right so maximum possible velocity in our whole universe is the speed of light so imagine how much is the speed of it actually speed of light is like 300000 kilometers per 1 second 300000 kilometers per 1 second that's the speed of light so we'll be learning about those things when you go further with the lesson part okay so just for now i have given you the brief okay so always remember light is way more faster than the sound so during the lightning process my dear children we can see the lightning first then the thunder comes back it's because light travels way more faster than the sound in air okay right then during a lightning if time is measured from the moment of observing light to the moment at which the sound is heard the distance to the point at which the lightning occurred can be calculated approximately now in here another point special point is given during a lightning if time is measured from the moment of observing the light to the moment at which the sound is heard ah uh, now i told you that there is a small bit of a gap between the light and the sound which is going to emit during a lightning no so if you can measure this time period approximately ah uh, then it states that right the distance to the point at which the lightning occurred can be calculated approximately that means from here like from how much distance the lightning has occurred right to the ground level i mean that to the ground at which point does the lightning has occurred can be calculated up to a you know like to a near value to an approximate value not to an exact but to an approximate value we can measure it okay right by taking the gap between the sound heard and the light which is observed if you can measure that gap then my dear children you can approximately investigate about the distance which the lightning strike has uh has struck on the ground okay okay then for extra knowledge like i said i told you that we are going to meet up with these speeds see number 1 given the speed of light is 300000 so 300000 kilometers now in here it is given 3 million meters per second 3 million meters per second right that means 3 into 10 to the power 8 ms minus 1 right right 300 million meters per second 300 million meters per second so speed of light is 300 million meters per second and the speed of sound is just 330 meters per second just 330 so this thing 
I mean like it's not going to give out a good idea for you guys so I'll make sure in order to get a good idea I'll convert this one like this so this is when you cut when you divide this thing by thousand you can get in kilometers so like I said can you remember this is the speed of light then 300,000 kilometers per second 300,000 kilometers per second or else 300 million meters per second 300 million meters per second right so 300,000 kilometers second kilometers per second that means within one second the light is going to travel light ray is going to travel 300,000 kilometers within one within just one second right if you look at your watch like this then you count a one second right then the light rays which is surrounding right which surround us is going to travel like 300,000 kilometers this is the idea of 3 into 10 to the power 8 m is minus 1 okay 300 million meters per second so this is the speed of light a very large value when you come into sound my dear children right it's very low low means actually it's just 330 meters per second here 300,000 kilometers per second sound just 330 meters per second so there is a huge gap that's why right when the lightning is going to strike when we just see the light we can cover our ears right so the time interval it takes a certain time interval no so that even sometimes my dear children now after closing the ears for like you know one to two seconds the sound is being heard so imagine the gap it's mainly because of the large amount of or large difference between the two speeds of speed of sound and speed of light okay right then then the second one as the speed of sound is 330 meters per second it takes about three seconds to travel a distance of one kilometer and uh, now the other thing speed of sound is around 330 so it will take about three seconds to travel a distance of one kilometers it's true no so within one second sound is going to travel 330 meters per second that means 330 times 3 0 9 9 it's around 990 that means nearly right 1 kilometer so nearly it will travel 1 kilometer within 3 seconds of time period nearly yeah? this is not an exact value but a near value so nearly this will travel like 9 9000 uh, kilometer 1000 meters which is 1 kilometer nearly so the speed of sound is 330 meters per second it takes about three seconds to travel a distance of one kilometer which is thousand meters so if the time between the observation of light and the hearing of sound in seconds is divided by three we get the distance to the point of light in, in kilometers so if the time between observation of light and hearing of sound in seconds is divided by 3 we get the distance to the point of lightning in kilometers ah then my dear children here it is given if so right if so the time between the observation of light and the hearing of sound in seconds when you divide it by 3 we can get the near value to the lightning point in kilometers example given let's see let us assume that the sound was heard sound was heard 12 seconds after the lightning now sound is going to hear 12 seconds after the lightning then the distance to the place of lightning is 12 over 3 which is equal to 4 kilometers in kilometers we can get the answer in here okay in kilometers we can get the answer it's because my dear children nearly 
right nearly light is nearly right sound is going to travel about 1 kilometers within 1 second about 1 kilometers within 3 seconds of a time period within 1 second it is going to like travel like 330 meters per second okay that means 330 meters within 1 second so when you multiply it by 3 nearly it's going to travel like 990 which is nearly 1000 so it will travel like 1000 meters within 3 seconds of time period okay 3 seconds for 3 seconds it will travel 1 kilometer okay within 3 seconds then in order to find out the amount of distance traveled within 12 seconds time period you just need to take 12 seconds and divide it by 3 by that way you can calculate the amount of kilometers right between the uh, between the place where the lightning has struck okay and uh, you which is the observer okay so you can calculate that distance by doing this thing this is not an exact value my dear children but an approximate one okay so here you can get the answer then 12 division 3 which is equal to 4 kilometers so nearly from your point like up to 4 kilometers you can find out that target where the light lightning has struck by using this method so this is how we can calculate the approximate distance between lightning point and you which means the observer okay right then so in here now we have studied about the types of lightning and about the lightning and thunder now my dear children will be investigating how we can generate a lightning spark right so under the topic here is given how to produce an electric spark electric spark being, means actually now the discharge of electrical charge now let's see produce an electric spark using induction coil available in the laboratory observe the production of light and sound while doing it now the issue is that my dear children these induction coils are very rare to find right and those are even expensive too so even uh, these things are available in special laboratories especially in a level laboratories advanced level laboratories these things are available right so it's very rare and difficult to find out these things my dear children so we won't be doing this experiment okay so because it's very hard to find and it's very rare to find right and uh, by using these things we can even show how the lightning is going to occur right so here it is given if an induction coil is not available in the school a spark plug in motorcycle can be removed from the engine and the way a spark is produced in it can be observed so the other thing is the spark plug so we can use the spark plug as well in some lighters my dear children i think you have seen there's a magento part right so that is identical to the spark plug over there you need to push in the lighter should be pushed down and a spark is coming out from that so upon pushing you might think that the sound which is generated is coming because of that pushing thing actually also uh, that is also going to create sound but however when the spark is going to come out from that instance also a sound is going to emit a tick sound is going to emit so it's identical to the lightning and the thun thunder okay so this is how actually we can manage to create a lightning spark at our school so most of the times you will not be having this kind of instruments at your school okay right this is how we investigate about the light process of lightning okay actually uh, in your school if you can find out this kind of an instrument right the induction coil then try to get these observations okay right so my dear children the other thing it's very special if you are doing this activity at your school don't try even to touch these things as it is very dangerous large amount of electric current is going to pass through these materials so it's going to be very dangerous 
so don't even right don't even try to touch these things so definitely right you have to participate or do this activity with the help of your teacher okay or else with the help of an adult otherwise it is going to be a trouble right remember this thing this is very important right so always now sometimes you might find out these kind of instruments especially like those spark plugs and you might you know uh, attach these things to electricity and you will see what's going to happen don't try these things okay it's going to be very dangerous so you know how does the lightning is going to be danger for you guys so the same thing can be observed in these things these instances my dear children so it's very important to safeguard yourself from these things okay so always always remember to get the idea and uh, remember to get the assistance of an adult okay right there so in the above activity you would have observed that an electric spark you could have also observed the production of light and sound so if you have done the activity my dear children right it's very simple what you have to do you just connect this thing and observe the thing is that we won't be able to find out these things as those things are very rare my dear children induction, co induction coils are very rare okay right so if you have done the activity then you can hear a sound which is going to emit with a small bit of an electric spark so you could have also observed the production of light and sound length of that spark is only a few millimeters or centimeters now as you can see here within the figure length of this spark is like few centimeters or millimeters okay few centimeters or millimeters but the length of the spark produced in a lightning bolt would be several kilometers right so this is going to emit a small bit of a sound like tick sound so it's because that the length of the lightning bolt which is created over here okay or uh, this electric spark which is created over here the length of it is just like in centimeters and millimeters but however my dear children when you take a lightning bolt which is going to come from a cloud to the ground so that bolt is like kilometers of a distance that means imagine how much of energy is going to carry out by this carry, carry out by that uh, lightning bolt or the lightning strike so the amount of energy carried out by those things will be great i mean like we won't be able to even give out a measurement for that thing right going to be it is going to be very immense that why uh, that is why heavy sound is given out right very large sound is given out right in here like in millimeters if it is in millimeters in here right a tick sound is given out if it is in millimeters then imagine how much uh, how much sound is how much sound is given when the bolt is like in kilometers okay so accordingly you may understand that the thunder accompanying is also intense so like i said my dear children according to the length of the lightning bolt you can clearly get an idea the intensity of the sound which is getting which is getting created because of the thunder okay so greater the distance which the lightning bolt is going to travel higher the intensity of the thunder right okay then right now my dear children we're going to start a fresh new lesson part now over there we discussed about lightning and thunder no now this is a fresh new lesson part in here we are going to discuss about a fresh new lesson part which is how lightnings get earth 
that means how does the lightning is going to be earth my dear children how does the lightning is going to come and contact with the earth right this is the one which we are discuss which we are going to discuss right now okay then there are four ways by which lightning get earth harming humans and the animals and damaging buildings so there are four ways which the lightning can conduct from ground from from cloud to ground okay conduct means actually earth okay so there are four ways which the lightning can come and ground okay so according to those four ways my dear children serve conditions i mean like you know the different kinds of conditions different kinds of uh, you know uh, harmful effects accidents can occur so now let's investigate what are those four methods in which the lightning strike will get earth okay right now we'll see what are those four types of right or the four methods which the lightning is going to be earth so number 1 direct strike number 2 contact voltage right number 3 side flash right number 4 step potential so these are the right these are the four main methods right these are the four main methods which the lightning can earth right lightning can get earth to the ground the four methods direct strikes contact voltage side flash and step potential okay the four methods so we'll be discussing these things in detail when you go further with the lesson part my dear children now let's see number 1 given direct strikes a strike of a lightning on a solitary man tree or a building standing on a flat land is known as direct strike if a human is struck by a direct lightning it would be serious affect the person because the lightning current flows through the earth through his or her body now the direct strike it's like this this is the cloud lightning is going to directly strike on the person which is over here and through that through that person my dear children what will happen the electrical charges is going to earth into the ground so this is going to be very deadly for the person because all the energy carried out by the lightning is going to flow through the person so definitely it's going to be lethal for uh, him or her right so this is the first and foremost one which is the direct strike directly the lightning is going to strike on the body of the person and it is getting earthened direct strike okay next one number 2 side flashes side flashes let's see a bolt of lightning hitting a tall building or free passes into earth through it and during its passage may side step from it and get earthen through the body of a man standing nearby ah now from a cloud the lightning will strike to a certain tower building or kind of an object and it will come along that object and certain uh, if a if a certain person is near to that uh, particular object then it will side flash like this and will come through the body of the person and get 
earned. So, like this. See, side getting uh, to a side getting flashed like this. Okay. So, reason for this is the flow of lightning current through a human body is easier than its flow through a building or a tree. Now, my dear children, you know that our body is always covered up with, you know, our body always has some amount of wetness. I mean, like our body has humidity, water. Sometimes, my dear children, our body has different kinds of salts. And our skin, therefore, going to act as a, right, a certain bit of a good conductor when compared to the other materials like buildings, trees and so on. Okay, you know that salt water is a good conductor of electricity. Okay, so if our body, you know, our body is, sometimes our body has wet, that means salts and minerals can be uh, available within our skin. So, our skin sometimes act as a good insulator. So, it's easier to travel, right, particles, especially these uh, electrical particles or electrical charges from our body or through our body than traveling through these uh, structures like plants or buildings. So, when a lightning bolt is going to come like to this, upon hitting onto a building or to a tower or else to a, a certain construction or else to a tree like this. It's easy to travel along the body of this person rather than traveling directly downward through that object. It's because this body or the skin of the person is behaving as a good, a good conductor for the conduction of electrical charges. I mean, it's a better conductor than the other material. So, it will definitely side flash and get earthened. However, in here, right, however, in here, my dear children, the lethalness is somewhat less than the previous because some amount of voltage and some amount of electric current is getting reduced upon traveling through this item now. And sometimes, my dear children, uh, not all of the charges will come towards the person. Some charges will also travel down and get earthened. So, the, uh, I mean, like the dangerousness or the lethalness is somewhat lesser than the previous instance inside flashes. Okay. Then, number three, contact voltages. Number three is contact voltages. Now, in here, being struck by a lightning, at a time of its production because of touching domestic electrical appliances or using cellular phones is known as a contact voltage. Besides, a person in contact with a tree at a time of the occurrence of a bill lightning may also fall prey to it when it hits the tree. This is also a contact voltage. Now, the contact voltage being struck by a lightning at a time of its produ uh, production because of touching domestic electrical appliances or using cellular phones is known as a contact voltage. Now, contact voltage means, my dear children, in here, upon the production of electrical or the electric, uh, electrical charges or the lightning, sometimes we might contact some certain objects, right? Conduct, uh, conductors, like you know, let's imagine that now we are at outside and we are holding a gate. Okay, I'm holding a gate like this, or I'm keeping my hand on a gate. So, gate is made up with now metals. So, when lightning strike is going to come and hit, it's not going to hit to us, but it's going to hit on a certain metallic surface. No, as metals are conductors, so it will hit on the object which is the gate. As I am touching or I am contacting it, it, so this is a contact voltage then, okay, contact voltage. Sometimes uh, I might touch, you know, metallic cellular phones, right. If uh, Now there is a problem, actually now they are mentioned in here as cellular phones, 
usual cellular phones will not get will not okay usual usual cellular phones definitely will not get attracted by lightning i mean like lightning is not getting attracted to normal cell phones normal cellular phones unless unless if the body is made up with metallic parts because my dear children lightning is lightning is a flow of electrical charges. It's a flow of electrical charges. So to flow electrical charges, there should be a conductor. What are the best conductors in our environment? Metals or else water. So if your mobile phone is not made up with metal metallic materials, then don't worry about using mobile phone in lightning time period. There is no issue in it, no problem at all. However, there are some certain types of mobiles which the body is made up with metals and in that case there is a risk. In that case there is a, there is definitely a risk. And the other thing is that most often you guys are going to do this kind of things during lightning. You guys are going to use earphones or else you are going, you're going to plug in your charger. So definitely at that time my dear children, no matter the state of the uh, no matter the uh, material which the cellular phone has been prepared, definitely you will get electrocuted by lightning. Why is that? Because the uh, the thing or the material, right, or that uh, instrument, the headphone you are going to insert, definitely the inside materials or the outside is definitely made up with metal. So uh, for sure, right, what will happen? Lightning strikes has the ability to come and contact with the mobile phones at that time. So if you are using the charger the same fate, right? Because through wires and conductors lightning can come. However, if the mobile phone is just made by glass and if you are making a call then you will definitely not get electrocuted by lightning because in mobile phones, my dear children, we are using certain type of electromagnetic wave, which is called as microwaves, electromagnetic waves. It's a wave. It's not electricity. We use signal waves, signals, signal waves. Those things are not related to electricity. If so, then we would have the ability to pass electricity without conductors. No, why, why would we need to you know uh, dra drag electric electric wires here and there in our houses if we can you know transport electricity from air to from space or oh, that means uh, just by thin space if we can uh, trans transport electricity then why would we need to use those kinds of conducting wires there is no point of using those things no right we won't be able to transport electricity okay or we won't be able to pass electricity from one place to another just by using thin air you have to use conductors conductors are the best method of transporting electricity that's why we are using wires we won't be able to uh, transport or we won't be able to transmit electricity wirelessly like bluetooth or wi-fi or any other kind of that kind of a uh, you know mobile by using a mobile technology we won't be able to do that right it's because my dear children electricity means electric electrical chargers in order to flow electrical chargers definitely there should be a conductor right so don't don't worry to use your mobile phone it's not going to be an issue at all right unless but however remember unless if the body is made up with metal, then there is a heavy risk, okay? If the body of the mobile phone is made up with metal, then there is a heavy risk. If not, there is, then there is no issue. Some, might, some of you might think that turning on data. Now, data has been turned on, right? I mean like you are surfing in the internet now and the lightning is going to come. So what will you what will you do? Definitely you will turn off the mobile phone and you will keep it away and you will turn off the data as well. So 
here the speciality here is that my dear children definitely mobile phone will not have the ability to attract lightning if your data is turned on that's a i mean like it's really going to be a stupid kind of a way to avoid from lightning there are some better ways to avoid lightning like that uh, better ways to avoid lightning rather than doing that okay it's because lightning is remember always lightning is flow of electrical charges electrical charges always flow through conductors not through insulators now can you remember in the previous one during the side flashes can you remember it came from tree then side flashes to your body why is that because your body is a good conductor than the others okay so always lightning charges or lightning effect or the electricity or these electrostatic charges always they are trying to find out a good conductor to travel don't be a conductor right that's how to be safe from electricity or else from lightning okay so there is no problem in using cellular phones if the body is not made up with metal glassy or plastic metal no problem or else okay then uh, the other thing is that you can call or you can even use internet there is no problem in it right there is no problem in it at all because lightning is always electric charges electric charges always flow from conductors right however if the phone is connected with however if the phone is connected with you know headphones or else with a charger then there is a huge risk of getting electrocuted by lightning because now you are using these things now the ones which are using the charger or else the headphone those things can act as conductors for sure okay right then so beside a person in contact with a tree at a time of the occurrence of lightning may also fall prey to it when it hits the tree this is called a contact voltage other than that my dear children right let's imagine that a person is contacting a wall or certain thing i mean like a wall or else a tree or else a gate or any other then in that case also if the lightning strike is going to happen to the wall or to the tree then if the person is contacting that object then the lightning will come through the object and will pass through the person to the ground so this is called as a contact voltage then okay so my dear children we have discussed the three main types out of four we discussed three main types or three main methods of right lightning which can be earthen to the ground the three main methods were contact voltages now you are contacting certain thing and to that what will happen the lightning strike will come and along your uh, body it will travel to the ground contact voltage then the direct strike directly to your head or to your body the lightning strike will come and it will get earthen that's the more the most dangerous one of all direct contact then my dear children side flashes you are standing near a certain object lightning is going to come and hit then from that object it will come to you because it it is quite easy to travel from your body rather than travel through a, an insulator okay so we discuss three main ways which the lightning can be earthen to the ground three possible ways okay so my dear children there is a one thing which is left behind that is step potential so we'll be discussing about the step potential in our next chapter because there are certain things to learn and certain explanations that needed to be done these things are very simple these three okay but however within a step potential right there are certain things special things that we needed to be dis that we need to be discussed with okay so therefore i'll be doing that step potential in our next chapter so stay with me with the next chapter to study about this step potentials then to watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons.
Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.